Hi everyone, Xavier Intellis, BMW Genius here at Don Jacobs BMW. We are at Kroger Field with the all new BMW iX, the first all electric SUV that they've put on the market. We're excited to do a POV drive, kind of a walk around uh, and teach you more about the car today. So like I mentioned, this is BMW's first shot at an all electric SUV. Um, we have the iX50i here, so this is the dual motor version, more power, uh, lots of features to, to kind of cover and talk over today too. Uh, just some kind of standout shots. We got a brand new look for our headlights. Uh, the front end uh, it comes straight out of the 4 Series. So if you look through the car, you can see a lot of points and additions that they made from other cars, uh, well, all while pulling it in uh, to a more futuristic and technologically forward package. So just a couple key points from the front end of the car here. Um, first, we have an all new full um, camera system with radar to work for your uh, driving assistance professional system. Makes that system a lot better, a lot more predictive. Um, so driving autonomously can happen on the highways in those scenarios. The front grill here, it is self-healing. So if you get little small rock chips and things like that, you just leave it on the sunlight. If there's a chip, it will go away with some heat. So that's a, a neat feature that is the first time we've seen in BMW as well. Um, like I mentioned, full LED headlights uh, on the front. Obviously don't need too big a grill. There's just a little bit of cooling that needs to happen for the battery, but um, doesn't have to have a huge opening for that to happen. Um, and the only thing that we can see under the hood is the logo pops out for your washer fluid. There's nothing else that you can get to as a consumer uh, from the front end, just specifically for techs, uh, technicians. Um, so that's the front end of the iX. couple talking points on the side of the car here. First, we have the 21-inch aero wheels. Um, it's interesting, but on electric cars, the style and shape of the wheel actually plays a lot in how much range you'll get. Um, so these kind of help the car get a little bit more range, a little bit more bulky, um, but that is to make them more aerodynamic. Um, speaking of aerodynamics, this is the most aerodynamic BMW uh, that has ever been made by the brand. Uh, you might not think that by looking at the initial shape, but all the studies and, and figures that we've seen says so. Um, we still have our comfort access as a new style door handle, so there's nothing to lift up or open. You just kind of put your hand under and that will open for you. Um, as we come down, this is where you find the biggest change is the charging point here. Um, so there's an AC and a DC adapter, so level two and level three charging are available for the car at charge point stations or wherever is most convenient for you. On the back side of the iX, uh, not a ton of features here, um, but still some important ones going on. Rear backup camera is kind of located in the BMW logo now, so kind of sleek and hidden. The long tail lights kind of accentuate the wide body uh, of the car. Big diffusers there, obviously no exhaust because it's full electric car, so something to get used to as well. And we do keep our kick to open and kick to close feature on this car too. Um, so I just kick in the center, pops that up in, and it'll do the same thing to close for us. So lots of changes to the interior of the iX from any other BMW you may have been in recently. Um, first things first, you'll be used to having your seat controls on the side of the seat and on the door now. So a big change for us. We uh, weren't used to that when we first got it, but kind of getting used to it as we drive it more. Um, you do have uh, two ways to open the door. There's an electronic button on the side that you'll just press and it will open for you. Um, if your car ever did run out of battery and you needed a way out, there is a lever that you can reach down in the doorway. Um, coming to the center here, uh, new shape for the steering wheel. It's the first time we've seen this steering wheel. It is pretty ergonomically comfortable. Um, initially looking at the shape, you don't know if it's gonna fit and feel well, but after driving it for a while, you'll get definitely used to it. And it's just like any other, uh, any other you've been in. Um, lots of different menus for lighting, for um, your head-up display, your main screen. A lot of that's all done kind of right around the steering wheel now where there used to be buttons use, uh, around the rest of the car.
One of the other giant changes to this car is our new one screen display. Um, so there's still three displays to kind of talk about separately on this. You have your head up display, which shows in the glass. That's gonna show you things like your navigation, um, routes, uh, your speed, speed limit, radio, kind of all the quick things that you'll wanna see while you're driving. The main screen that's in front of you here is just gonna show some general data about the car. So charge, uh, charge level, range, what gear you're in, how many miles the car has, all the kind of normal things that you'd expect to see there. It's just in a digital format. And then the right side is still kind of your main screen for controlling things like settings, uh, personalizing the car to you, getting your iDrive, um, and driver profile set up in the car is all gonna happen on that main screen there. This car specifically, we have our Mocha interior. Um, so a little bit of brown on the side with some black and gold mixed in as well. Just kind of a new thing for the iX is to have some of this kind of brushed gold look. I actually really like it. I think it comes across really well and it's well done. Um, fit and finish on the car is excellent. We would expect that from BMW nowadays, but um, no creaking, no cracking. Um, everything feels really, really luxury still, um, even though it's a new car for the lineup. The rear seat is still pretty spacious, still usable. Um, you can definitely fit three people back there if you want to, especially because you're not having to have that transmission and driveline tunnel anymore. It's a flat floor, um, so you have a, a bit more space and you don't have to share leg room back there. All right, everyone, so now that I'm in the iX, we'll do a little POV drive, kind of talk about what the car feels like to be in and you know how it compares to a normal combustion engine car. Um, first, start stop down at the center there. A nice little boot up noise from the car. Um, putting in drive, new shifter, um, kind of similar to Porsche's shifter now. Um, have our drive mode and our battery helper mode. Um, difference there, drive is kind of driving like normal um, and the battery mode will turn your regenerative braking up to the max, um, so the car can really be driven with just one foot. As soon as you take your foot off of the gas, it's going to be um, slowing down and ready to stop for itself, um, and I'll demonstrate that a couple times as we're driving. But for right now, it'll just be a normal drive. Um, you may be able to see our head-up display directly in front of us there. As we start to go, that will show us our uh, next destination, or sorry, our speed. You might be able to see the head-up display here, but you can definitely see on our main screen, kind of got our reduced map, um, our speed on the left side, our gear on the right side, and then our main screen is just showing, um, again, kind of the, the map. So I'll have that up for us to see as we drive along. It's always interesting as you're taking off, getting the car, getting used to the car being basically silent. Um, there is a little bit of noise that comes out as you drive along just piped through the speakers, um, which we'll demonstrate a little later when we go into sport mode as well, because it amps it up a little bit and makes it a, a more fun. Uh, Range-wise, you can see that we are at 88% and have about 244 miles left to empty is what the car is estimating. A uh, little, little less than what you may expect, but uh, most of the test drives that have happened on this car so far have been pretty spirited. Um, so that's obviously gonna affect what the car thinks the range will be if you're doing a lot of quick, fun driving all the time. Um, under normal circumstances, 100% will see you around 300 miles, plus or minus 25. Again, just kind of depending on what kind of driver you are and what kind of driving you like to do. Now, I absolutely love the steering wheel on this car. Um, again, it's a bit of a different shape to any other car that I've ever been in, um, but it's very easy to turn with. You know, it's not, it being in a regular shape does not affect its usefulness. Uh, it's comfortable. The weather is thick enough to kind of fit around, to fit your hands around and feel ergonomic. Um, overall, again, just a nice shape. I'm 
just kind of putting along here. This car is extremely quick though, as we get onto the main road here. I'll demonstrate just a little bit of a takeoff in our normal driving mode. So yeah, nice and quick. You're not gonna be wanting for power whatsoever. a little bit of traffic here so not the most fun way to drive the car but kind of one of the best scenarios for the car you know these electric cars are great for in the city driving um, where your internal combustion cars will kind of lack and lose a lot of their gas mileage this one really excels and you'll get you know max range just with normal driving depending on how you're doing it My biggest question when we started to learn about this car was how would it stack, stand up as a BMW? Would it still feel like a BMW? Would it have a heart? Um, I think it does. You know, it, it doesn't have maybe as much personality as a full-on M car, um, but it definitely it's something that you'll get attached to if you're, you know, any kind of a car enthusiast. You can definitely still get attached to this car. It's fun. It has its own little quirks. Um, and people will definitely, you know, want to talk to you about it and want to learn about it. And with all the changes that they've made to the iDrive system and just, you know, it being a new car in general, people will and you will want to learn a new thing about this car every single day you get in it. This car specifically is equipped with the Driving Assistance Professional System. Um, so mostly for highway use, but um, you could use it on kind of a main road like this. As long as there's lines, it can keep you kind of in the center of the lane and a good distance to the car that's in front of you, no matter what the scenario is. So basically a full autonomous driving mode, um, not quite as unregulated as a Tesla's. Um, BMW just kind of wants the driver to be a little bit more attentive, a little bit more ready to intervene if necessary than Tesla's system. Um, and I bring up Tesla because that's going to be, you know, a main competitor for this car. The Model Y, the Model X, I've been in a couple. I've not driven a Model X, but comparatively to the Model Y, um, it feels sort of similar. I would say this drives quite a bit nicer and feels more well put together. Um, but if you've driven an electric car before and are interested in this, it's going to have a similar feel to it. Uh, BMW obviously changes the driving dynamics of the car, so a lot more uh, response from the suspension. Um, good braking, good handling is kind of RMO, uh, and it just helps to have all that weight down low with the batteries um, for your driving dynamics overall. So again, to talk a little bit more about this big, uh, big main screen now, it is still touchscreen, so you can move around and pull around uh, whatever you need to see here. Um, and it's still as big as it is. It's still quick. It's still an attentive screen. It's still usable. Um, there's not much lag at all. Uh, you know, the bigger the screen in the car, I always just think you know it's going to be more lag to deal with, because typically the systems that are the computer systems in these cars isn't you know, crazy expensive or crazy uh, well-developed. In here, it's a different story though. You know, it's very, very usable, very quick. You're not waiting for anything to happen. Um, you do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's all wireless. Uh, my favorite feature with this car right now is the Apple CarKey Plus, um, which I have it tied to my phone right now. So I don't need to take out the the car key. Um, I can just walk up with my phone in my pocket. I don't have to touch my phone at all. Um, in fact, it can be dead up to five hours and I'll still be able to use my key to get in the car, start it, drive away, lock it when I'm done. Um, and another key feature that we're really, really wanting people to take to and, and really use in the future is the My BMW app. Um, my, the My BMW app is going to help you see a lot of things on your car while you're away from it. So, you know, if you're thinking, what's my charge level or what's my range? Um, where's the closest charging station? When do I need service next? Any of those kind of normal thoughts that you'll have about your car can be answered just in the My BMW app. Um, they've done a really, really good job of making that your one-stop shop. Um, for anything that has to do with any of your BMWs. Um, so you can have um, as all of your cars in one place 
switching in and out of them is very quick, uh, very easy, and um, all the information, all the same information is there for you. I mean, even up to the financial services tab, so you can see when is my next payment, do I need to delay one, or do I need to change something in my system? Easy to do through the My BMW app as well. I have my driver profile tied to the car. So it has saved my driving position. Um, some of the radio stations that I like to listen to kind of are saved inherently in the car. My Apple CarPlay is set up. As soon as I get in the car, it's ready to go every time. Um, so computer system wise, the car is done excellently. Everything, um, I have no complaints from a usability or computer system standpoint for this vehicle. All right, like I promised earlier, I wanted to do a quick um, quick pull in the sport mode. So I'm gonna click the My Modes button here in the wooden tab, go to sport. You'll notice the sound gets a little bit more uh, aggressive or a little bit more wary as you're here. As I put my foot down, we get going pretty quick. It's fun because it, uh, you know, any kid that's ever wanted to ride in a rocket ship, it basically sounds like a rocket rocket ship, and it goes like one too. Um, it is not gonna replace your favorite M car, I don't think, um, just because I love the sound of an engine. I'll never get tired or want to replace that, but it is way crazy fun to drive still. slow it down so we don't get in trouble here. Um, one other interesting thing to get used to on this car is the fact that there's no gears. Um, electric cars, uh, when you think about it, don't need a transmission. They don't need gears. It's just one motor kind of continuously going. Um, if you've ever had an electric RC car, it's kind of the same idea, um, just kind of uh, pushed up to the full size, full size market or full size version. Um, You're able to use it in any scenario. Um, obviously, driving like I am, a little bit more spiritedly, is going to lower your charge and your range, but it's happy to do it. It's a, at the end of the day, it's a BMW. It's designed to be happy to do these kind of things. Okay, so the other mode that I wanted to demonstrate was the battery mode. So, as you notice, I kind of lurched forward there because I wasn't ready for it. But this mode takes turns up your regenerative braking, or for the car to be able to regain some of its charge just in normal driving scenarios. So as you're driving along, as I pull my foot off the brake right now, you'll notice the car will go ahead and slow down for me. And it will do this all the way to a stop. So, like I mentioned, if you are in normal traffic in the city, and you're pretty good with your foot, you just take your foot off the gas and it'll get you all the way down to zero and a good distance. Oh, it's so much fun. Now, one of the other things to mention on this car is charging. Um, obviously charging is extremely important. Um, it's the only way you're going to be able to get the car to go in the morning when you need to go on your trip or to work. Um, you can do level two or level three charging depending on what you have close to you and what's available. Um, level two charging you can do at home as long as you have a 240 volt outlet somewhere in range of the vehicle to charge it. Um, but that's going to get you about 20 miles per hour of charging. So. Um, definitely adequate for just your day-to-day -day driving, um, but if you need that kind of level three setup, um, it's basically double the charge. Um, so it goes from a max of 240 volts to a max of 480, uh, around 480 volts of charging that you're able to do with that. Uh, you cannot have that at your house. It will cause a brownout for your neighborhood. <laughs> um, but BMW is... Um, partnered with Electrify America, and you'll get two years of complimentary charging through Electri Electrify America, up to 30 minutes, um, and you have to at least use, uh, wait an hour between charges. Um, 
And so essentially you've got, if you've got one of those charging points around your house, you have free gas for two years from BMW, uh, which is pretty interesting. I wish they would do that on the internal combustion side, um, but EV seems like it's gonna be the awesome way to go in the future and I'm excited for it. back in our efficient mode <laughs> get some range out of the rest of the car um, comfort wise the seat because you don't have a transmission tunnel and they've moved the seat controls to the door here it's a lot wider than any other BMW seat that I've been in a um, little bit more bolstering on the left side than there is on the right side here um, as you tend to lean kind of towards the door because that's where your armrest is um, very, very comfortable seat, nice and wide, tall as well. Um, the rear, as you can see in the passenger side here, is fixed, uh, but it's tall enough. I'm six foot three inches tall, um, and it, it fits me pretty well. Um, comfort, again on the comfort side, we have all of our settings here. So we have our steering wheel heat, which I have on medium right now. You can go um, high, very high. Um, Seat heat, which has four settings instead of three now, which you'll be used to in other BMWs. And a new feature, which is radiant heating. Um, so places like around your foot well under the steering wheel um, will heat up and radiate heat. So you kind of feel like, um, for lack of a better term, you're in kind of a sauna or cocoon um, when you're kind of in the driver's seat and have that turned on. So you're getting heat coming from your seat, from the armrests here on the left and right, and then also the underside of your steering wheel column is radiating heat too. So warming up in the car is very, very quick. You also have um, ventilated seats in this, in this vehicle, um, which have four settings again. So if you want air pushed through the seat to kind of help you stay cool or cool down, it's easy um, and ready for you too. All available on the passenger side as well. Um, you have four zone climate in this car too. Um, so I can have my temperature set at wherever I like, my passenger can do the same, and then the rear passengers can have their setups um, exactly where they want to be as well. Let the car slow me down here as we turn in. But um, you know, overall in the iX, it's it's spacious, it's roomy, it doesn't feel. Uh, I wouldn't say it feels too cavernous, though. You know, things are close enough. I can reach the entire screen. Um, it's not so far away that I'm struggling to change options or change buttons. Um, but even if I was, you know, there's other ways to get things done. You still have your iDrive controller, which any BMW driver will be used to. Um, you've got your voice controls, which is able to do through Siri um, or BMW's personal connect uh, personal assistant um, it's happy to talk to you or for you to talk to it anyway to kind of get things done and that's true for navigation for setting temperature um, heating the car cooling the car what have you I in my short time of being in the iX and using it I have loved it um, I'm excited for more people to experience it here um, in the coming years, and I think electrification is going to be a great way to go for BMW. Thanks for joining me uh, for our video on our iX. Again, I'm Xavier, BMW Genius at Don Jacobs BMW in Lexington, Kentucky. This is our demo vehicle, so feel free to come by, drive it, see what you think, feel the differences in the electric car versus an internal combustion car, and um, we'll be waiting and happy to see you.